Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Longo, and I'm the head of business development for Annex Power. Uh, I'm here to give you a virtual pitch on Annex, where we've developed technology that generates carbon-free power from natural gas without any combustion. And the way we do that is by using what's called a natural gas turbo expander generator, which uses the pressure and the flow of gas moving through pipelines to spin a turbine and generate power in much the same way that wind spins a wind turbine or even how water spins a water wheel. Now, what we're gonna be talking about over the next couple minutes is uh, first we're gonna go into an overview of the opportunity, uh, the NX opportunity, as well as the technology. Then we'll take a look at the timeline uh, and where we've been and where we're going. Then we'll take a look at the market opportunity and the business case, some of the more commercially uh, oriented sides of the business. Then we'll finish up with a little bit on greenhouse gas emissions reductions, as well as taking a look at the management team that is tasked with executing on this great opportunity that we have. So in order to uh, sort of set the stage for this opportunity, I wanna do so in the context of the full natural gas value chain. And if you look at the natural gas transmission system, uh, and the very first thing that happens to the gas is it's basically cleaned, it's compressed, and then it's put into the pipeline. And it's put into the pipeline at a very high pressure so that it can move from point A to point B in a really efficient way. Now, along the way in that transmission system, there are these compressor stations which maintain that high pressure in the pipelines by adding energy and compressing the gas so that again, it can move from point A to point B efficiently. Now, what's great for the transportation of gas is not so great for the end use of natural gas. So even though high pressure gas moves really well from point A to point B, it's not so great from an end use standpoint. And so the industry solution to that problem of excess pressure are these pressure regulating valves, which are great. They're safe, they're reliable, but they're also super inefficient. And so what we sought to do in developing our technology at Annex was maintain the safety and reliability associated with these pressure regulating valves while eliminating the inefficiency. And the solution is the 500 kW Annex Turbo Expander, uh, which applies a tried and true technology to a novel market. And the reason why I say that uh, it's a tried and true technology is because turbo expanders have gained a lot of traction in natural gas processing, cryogenic, and air separation applications. And what's great about being in business development for Annex is that plant engineers and boots on the ground uh, at a lot of these customer sites, they understand the technology and they understand how the energy is being wasted. And because it's relatively simple, the first question we always get is, well, why hasn't this been tried before? And the short answer is that it has. And if you go to any of the large industrial technology uh, websites like Atlas Copco, Honeywell, uh, any of those companies, uh, most of them will actually have this turbo expander generator uh, offering listed on their website. But what you very quickly realize as you do a little bit of research is that they don't actually have any operating in the field. And the reason for that is because they attempted to uh, take their cryogenic air separation uh, or um, gas processing turbo expanders where gas conditions are super stable and they tried to custom engineer them to fit in the natural gas transmission and distribution market where conditions are super volatile and can really fluctuate on a minute by minute basis. And the result of taking technology designed for stable conditions, putting it in a volatile environment was unreliable performance. Something you'll see uh, the few attempts to enter this market in the past are marred by. The, uh, the next reason why there hasn't been a, any traction in this market is because uh, that process of taking cryogenic turbo expanders and custom engineering them to fit in the natural gas transmission distribution market, that's not building a scalable business. They are custom designing each specific turbo expander for each specific site. And uh, again, that's not a scalable business that has prohibitively high one-time engineering expenses and prohibitively high one-time installation expenses, which make the system uneconomical for both customers, investors, and then again, ultimately those businesses. So how does Annex overcome some of these obstacles? How does it overcome the custom engineering expenses, the one-time engineering and installation expenses? And you can start to see how in the picture on your right 
where literally in order to get the technology up and generating power, it's as simple as plugging it into an existing T connection, pouring a concrete pad, uh, and then setting down the modular skid base uh, unit and having it start to generate power in really a couple of weeks. Um, so we're able to completely bypass a lot of those prohibitively high expenses that have tripped up attempts uh, to enter this market in the past. Now, what separates Annex and really makes the company unique is the relentless two plus year customer discovery journey that Annex embarked on uh, back in 2017, where it basically went out and gathered as much customer data as it possibly could. It entailed talking to thousands of customers. It entailed securing hundreds of thousands of data points that ultimately enabled the company to move from customer data to inform its technology design. And what this looked like, again, was literally talking to thousands of customers, understanding what their gas conditions were, and then taking all that data and plotting it on the chart that you see on your screen. Uh, on the y-axis, you have your inlet pressure, and then on the x-axis, you have your pressure ratio, which is your inlet divided by your outlet pressure uh, of the pressure regulation that's going on. And what we saw once we put all this customer data on the chart, which you can see in the bubbles um, on the yellow screen, is that a majority of our market was actually clustered in a very specific region, at least the market that we wanted to serve. So we literally drew a square, a rectangle around um, the market that we wanted to serve where the majority of our customer gas conditions resided and said, okay, let's design technology that's capable of serving this part of the market with a single design. And the result were these 12 design points that you see on your screen that make up this rectangle. And the key takeaway here is that uh, anywhere within this rectangle, anywhere from 600 PSI to 1200 PSI on the inlet side, and from a pressure ratio of 1.4 to 3.0, uh, Annex is going to be able to generate full 500 kW capacity, and it can really generate power at very high efficiency anywhere around the box, uh, which again makes up the majority of our customer market as pulled directly from customer sites. Now, the punchline here is that our technology is capable of serving the majority of our market with just a single design, which is a game changer for this technology. Now, this customer obsessed design approach led to several technical innovations that are critical to the technology's success. And while we don't have enough time to talk about all of them uh, on this call, uh, I wanna highlight a couple key technical innovations uh, by starting off with the innovation, going into the significance of the innovation, and then looking at the implication uh, of that innovation. And the first one I wanna talk about here is the modular skid-based design, a really important innovation that enables us to have this off-the-shelf plug-and-play capability with the implication of that it enables us to keep costs down, build the scalable business, and make it economical for our customers. The next one I want to take a look at are these uh, advancements made in active magnetic bearings. The significance here is that it offers more stability for the system and eliminates the risk of cross-contaminating the gas with the oil versus other bearings. Again, something we heard was a non-negotiable in the customer discovery process. The implication here is that it improves performance and reliability. So what you're starting to see is Annex not only uh, taking advantage of some of its own internal innovations, but also taking advantage of some of the innovations in adjacent markets, like the magnetic bearing market, right? This was not possible five or 10 years ago. Next one I wanna highlight is the direct drive generator without a gearbox. Um, anybody who's done work in the wind industry should have a pretty good idea of the problems and issues that gearboxes can uh, can cause, very expensive. The significance here is that it gives us the ability to respond to volatile gas conditions, helps us eliminate costly auxiliary equipment, and it reduces the wear parts on the unit, which helps us minimize maintenance. So it should be clear the implication here is it improves reliability and reduces cost. The next one is an absolutely uh, critical one. It's this two-stage expansion design, something that never came into play with the cryogenic gas processing turbo expanders because the gas conditions were so stable. You could handle that letdown process with just a single uh, stage design. The significance of, of our two-stage design is that it increases the gas uh, control of the gas flow and maximizes the energy that can be extracted from the gas stream. 
The implication here is that it improves performance, allowing us to exert maximum control over the gas going through our machine. The next one is that the ATE, the Annex Servo Expander, is installed in parallel with existing pressure regulating valves. And this is arguably the most important innovation because it allows us to guarantee safety and 100% reliability by not altering the existing gas delivery infrastructure, right? This is critical, crucial gas delivery infrastructure, oftentimes the lifeline of the companies and the plants that we serve. And so we knew very early on, again, through our customer discovery process, that we didn't have a chance of being successful unless we could guarantee this safety and 100% reliability, and we could give the operators peace of mind. And what we've heard is that by going in parallel with the existing pressure regulating valves, we actually add an additional layer of safety redundancy, which uh, makes the system a little bit more safe because it's an additional run for the gas to pass through and move downstream at a lower pressure. The implication here is that it improves reliability. And it brings us to our last innovation that I'm gonna be talking about on this call, which is the axial flow turbine with partial admission design. The significance here is that it enables us, much like the modular uh, skid-based innovation, it enables us to serve our target market with just a single design, which enables us to reduce costs and again, build a scalable business. So we've looked at the technology design process, the customer discovery journey. Uh, let's take a look at the business case, one of the last uh, remaining pieces of the puzzle from the commercial opportunity here. And, and to do so, I wanna look at a case study of a real life oil refinery in Alberta. And I wanna highlight that the numbers here are not taken from assumptions. They are taken from the actual gas and power data that was provided by the Alberta oil refinery. And from the gas conditions that they sent over, again, thousands of data points, it was determined that the NX system size after our analysis, uh, the optimal size would be 1.5 megawatts or three units. The price of grid power paid at this refinery is $60 per megawatt hour. A little bit high, no doubt, due to the fact that it's in a pretty remote location. The tons of carbon dioxide uh, emitted avoided is 0.57 tons of CO2 per megawatt hour. And the reason I highlight this is because it's important, particularly in Alberta, where for every um, ton of CO2 avoided per megawatt hour, they are paid $40. Now, this again is specific to Alberta, but I want to highlight this because um, it, it's a proxy for the renewability incentives that are out there really across the globe, especially in some of the more progressive uh, US states. Now, right now, this amount, this tier price, as I call it, is $40 a ton. It's going to increase in 2022 to, to $50 and should continue to increase uh, as we move towards 2050. And uh, when a lot of these provinces and states would like to be carbon neutral. <clears throat> now, what this gives us is it gives us two ways to create value. The first is on the power side. And the second is on the, uh, the carbon dioxide, dioxide avoidance side. So if you look just at the power savings value that's able to be created, well, you're looking at almost $800,000 per year. Now, if you add to that the savings uh, from the, the carbon dioxide emissions reduction, you're looking at another almost $300,000 for a total annual value on this system of almost $1.1 million and increasing, especially as the tier price for tons of CO2 avoided uh, goes up. Now, the best part about this is there are really no losers in this, create, in this uh, equation. If you look at the oil refinery, well, they're able to get cheap, clean power, and they have savings that drop right to their bottom line. And they can talk, talk about it from a marketing perspective, how they're adhering to their corporate sustainability uh, objectives. And they get to focus on what they do best, which is being an oil refinery, right? They don't need to manage the technology. So it's a win for them. You look at the pipeline operators, well, now it gets really attractive because they're able to recover their cost of compression. They're able to talk about this um, environmentally friendly technology, again, adhering to their corporate sustainability mandates. And they're also able to become a more trusted 
partner to their customers, right? They're becoming an energy solutions provider rather than just a dumb pipe that delivers molecules, right? So it's a win for them. And uh, they also benefit financially. And then finally, Annex gets to deploy its technology and create uh, value and generate a return for its investors. So it's a win for Annex. But the last thing I want to highlight before talking about the management team is the environmental side of the equation here. And the best part about this technology is, again, it's a zero combustion, zero carbon emissions technology that uh, generates over 3,700 megawatt hours of carbon-free power per year uh, at a rate of 0.57 tons of CO2 uh, per megawatt hour of emissions reduction. You're looking at over 2,100 tons of CO2 annual emissions reduction per unit. Now, given Annex's growth projections, uh, we expect that by 2050, we'll be able to reduce CO2 emissions by over 23 million tons uh, of CO2 emitted, which is something that we're really excited about, uh, but also recognize that even though the, the environmental side of things is attractive, it ultimately means nothing if you can't make it work as a business decision. And so that's why we've focused so much on blending the two of these in order to create a, a really exciting opportunity for a lot of our customers. So last thing that we'll finish up on is by taking a look at the Annex Power team. Uh, you're probably sick of hearing me talk by now, but uh, again, Michael Longo in business development from Annex. Uh, I come from a background in management consulting where I worked with uh, Fortune 500 companies like Exxon, Sabic, uh, and some others that make up Annex's target market. Um, we also have uh, Kevin Fody, who's our director of gas. Kevin comes from a 35 year career at Praxair, most recently as president of the US industrial gas business, which was their largest business. He brings an exceptional understanding of, uh, of, of gas and power utilities and an unmatched network of uh, large industrial end users of natural gas, utilities, and, um, and more because when he was at Praxair, Praxair was often the utility's largest electricity customer, largest natural gas customer, and with the large industrial sites, Praxair, again, now acquired by Lindy, was a major supplier for them. Uh, so Kevin brings a ton of experience and a great network uh, from that background. We also have John O'Rourke, who's our director of energy based over in Dublin. And he started out um, working in the energy space uh, over 30 years ago. He uh, eventually uh, was involved in building out Duke Energy Solutions, which was the non-regulated park part of Duke Power. Um, eventually grew that to over 100 million in revenue and became the CEO of Applied Energy Solutions and eventually Lime Energy, which was a publicly traded uh, company and, and his expertise comes in doing these uh, power purchase agreement, shared savings, uh, leasing arrangements, any type of way to monetize the electricity and the value that Annex creates. Uh, John has really good experience doing that and, and putting the, the financing together and then the commercial terms together. And finally, we have Joe, uh, who most of you guys know. He's uh, our CEO, uh, professional engineer who spent 35 years as the president of Longo Electrical Mechanical, which pro provides electrical and mechanical sales, service, and maintenance to large industrial sites and power plants, again, serving Annex's core customers. So that's the team, um, and that's really all I had on this presentation. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, my email address and phone number, as well as our website, are all listed on this slide. Feel free to drop me an email if you have any questions or want to learn more. You can also give me a call or text me. And uh, there's a ton more information and presentations on our website, www.annexpower.com. I, uh, I hope everybody's staying sane. I hope everybody's staying healthy. And uh, I hope we get out of this quarantine soon and uh, life can return to normal. Thanks again, everyone, for your time. And I hope to hear from you soon.